During the summer months, as a teacher, I find myself with an influx of spare time. While perusing the awesome J. Strauss math video archives, I came across this awesome 19 minute explanation of geometric sequences. Any explanation that takes 19 minutes has to be really good, right? As part of my commitment to making shorter, more engaging video lessons, I decided to go back to the editing room and cut apart the original video in order to make it much more brief and to the point. Now there's not much that's engaging about this video, but it is brief. I mean, if you're really paying attention, at one point the desk I'm sitting at changes, probably because I got kicked out of the room I was in because I was in it for at least 19 minutes recording the original video. But that's about the only quirky thing you're gonna see in this video. So get ready for a choppily edited introduction to geometric sequences. So geometric sequence, this is just a sequence where the ratio of consecutive terms is a constant. A common ratio we can define as the ratio of any two consecutive terms in a geometric sequence. In our general formula here, we use A as the first term. R just tells us the common ratio between any two consecutive terms in our sequence. Just before we get started, I just want to look at how you would determine what the common ratio is, or even if there is a common ratio. And the way we do that is we take one term and divide by the previous term. Let's look at two and one. Okay, so we're going to start with two, and we're going to divide by the previous term. Two divided by one is two. We can continue that going through our sequence. If we take four and we divide it by two, we get two, and so on and so on and so on. So we're able to tell that our common ratio is two. Remember, A represents our first term. That's one. Okay, so I'm telling you right away that this is a geometric sequence. I'm asking for the first three terms. Remember, we know that A is our first term. So in this case, we know that five is our first term. Okay, so we could just write five, but let me show you how you'd arrive at that by completing a calculation. You remember, we wanna look at T1, our first term. So we're gonna sub one in for N. Okay, well, this is just five times three to the power of zero. Do you remember with these types of problems, you wanna do your exponents first. Okay, you don't wanna do five times three to the power of zero. You wanna do three to the power of zero times five. So we're gonna get five times three to the power of zero is one. Therefore, our first term is five, right? Just like we anticipated. Remember, A is our first term. Second term, same thing. We're gonna sub in two, three to the power of one is three. We're gonna multiply by five to get 15. We're just gonna sub in three here. What we have here is five times three squared, which is nine. Five times nine is 45. So for our first three terms, we would say, therefore we have five, 15, 45. Okay, you got yourself a geometric sequence there. So to cut the length of this video, in at least half, I've included a freeze frame for this example that you can take a look at instead of a full explanation. The process is exactly the same, but it does involve fractions. Just remember you have to raise the fraction to the power of the exponent, then multiply by the A value in order to generate your sequence. We're gonna start with our 16, that's our A value, but we're going down to four, and then one, and so on and so on and so on. Uh, this is sort of a different type of problem. I want you to determine the number of terms in this sequence. So we're starting at four, and we're applying some pattern, and we're continuing to apply that pattern until we get 2,916. So our goal here is to determine the number of terms. Okay, remember A is the first term, R is the common ratio, and we raise it to the power of N minus one. Okay, remember we always start with our A value in our sequence. To determine our R value, what we can do is take the ratio of any consecutive terms. So what we're gonna do is, let's just pick on 12. We'll do 12 over four here. That should give us three. And let's double check. Let's take 36 and divide by 12. Okay, it turns out that gives us three as well. Therefore, we can assume that R is three. Okay, you got yourself a geometric sequence there. Okay, so we've got R is three, we've got A is four. So we wanna solve for N here. What we need is, we need to sub in Tn. So we need to know what Tn is. Okay, so remember Tn, that's going to be the term that we get when we sub in the number of terms. Okay, so when we sub in the total number of terms in our sequence, we should get 2,916. This is going to be our Tn term. If we sub that in, we should be able to solve for the number of terms that get us to that point. I'm going to sub in all of this information here. Okay, so Tn we know is 2,916. A is 4, R is 3, and we've got our N minus 1. Okay, so remember our goal here is to solve for N. What we want to do here is get rid of this 4. Okay, we want to divide this out. Okay, so doing that we get 729. We still got 3 to the power of N minus 1. We could solve an equation like this by taking this big ugly number and writing it as a base of 3. We can write it as 3 to some power. We should be able to solve for n. Okay, so through trial and error, you could tell that if you took 3 and raised it to the power of 6, you'll get 729. Now, because we have a common base, we can just sort of neglect our bases. We'll just look at our exponent. Pretty straightforward. We're just going to bring one over to the other side, and we get n equals 7. There are 7 terms in our sequence. And if you wanted to check, so what we could do is we could multiply by 3, multiply by 3, multiply by 3, until we've done that 7 times, and we should get this number. 
So I know I could have just recorded a new video on geometric sequences, but I appreciate the value of recycling and turning something old into something new. It's like when people refinish an old dated chair into a swanky new modern chair. This video is the YouTube video equivalent of refinishing an old dated chair. If this video helped in any way, feel free to like and subscribe for more mathematical chaos. And as usual, thanks for watching.